let's say someone builds all these relationships and then you're you're deployed on one and now you get three more calls obviously it's not a bad thing that you're getting more calls but saying no multiple times they, they're going to stop calling you right so how do you manage that um that process i guess i i agree with both sides of that um to 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 a degree right so I was very loyal to pilot for a long time for like 14 or 15 years. And, um, things went, one of the, the carrier that I mainly worked for, um, changed up the way they did things and they weren't, they were trying not to use IAs as much. And so we kind of, the work dropped off and there, there weren't other opportunities, um, or it's seemingly with pilot. I think that they wanted to keep me available for that particular carrier, but my income like went off a cliff in that summer. I was like, Oh no, I was like found myself in the middle of summer, like just at home. And I'm like, this is not, so I had, I had to make a bunch of phone calls to, to try and get some work. Um, so there's the, obviously if you, if you diversify, right. You know, which everybody tells us to do, um, and get on with a bunch of firms, I would say instead of like getting on with as many as possible, I would try to get on with like the top 10 or top 20 because it's, it's kind of like there's a point of diminishing returns where the, the top firms are going to have like the most work and then it's going to drop off after that with smaller and smaller and smaller firms. Right. So you can, you're going to be on these, these back 30 over here that even in the best times could give you like one claim a month or something like that, or, or, or barely any cat or whatever. So I think it's important to, um, to, to be on a lot of rosters, but the flip side is that if you are working for a company that's keeping you busy and you've, you're, de you're developing a relationship with them and they like you and you like them, then I think you're, you're, what you're saying in your instincts on this are pretty, pretty spot on because you don't want to be in a situation where you're saying no to firms a bunch Right. Cause if, you know, if I work for pilot, but I'm also on like April Crawford, Alacra and whoever, and pilot always calls me first. Right. And I always go with pilot, but then I get a phone call from these other four or five firms and I'm saying no. And I do that two or three times, three times. They're probably going to probably going to stop calling. Right. But it doesn't matter because pilot always calls. Right. Until pilot doesn't. So it could be that, you know, you, this is a tough one to navigate, but I don't know that it's that big of a deal um, because I could call back Crawford, even though they called me three times, you know, from the last three years and then something happened with pilot. I call Crawford and say, Hey, listen, I'm available um, to work if you, when you guys call or if they, you know, a big hurricane hits and they don't call, but I call them and say, Hey, I'm available. I've been doing this for seven years or five years or whatever it is. And uh, I've got all these licenses and I'm ready to go. I've got my ladder. You just, point me in the direction of handing claims and I'll take care of them, right? They're probably going to say yes. All right, well, if you're ready to go, let's get you going. I see you're on our roster already, you know. Um, so it's kind of a pros and cons sort of a thing. I'm kind of working through it out loud with you <laughs> in a way. Yeah, so yeah. pros, obviously you're developing relationships, you know, uh, with one firm. And there's a, there's another piece to this which I'll get to in a second. Um, also, you want to, you definitely want to apply at all these firms or at least like the top, would say top 10, 50, top, top 15 to 20, maybe top 10 to 15, because if there's a situation where the firm that you want to work for, um, and this, stuff like this happens, right? And it's nobody's fault, but like the, the main carrier that they, that they were going to run claims with in Florida goes out of business, right? They go bankrupt. Mm. I think that that's happened multiple, almost every time we have a big, big hurricanes, right? Or have multiple big hurricanes, um, these companies will, and then they're like, well, we don't have anything. I'm sorry. You don't want to be like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go to crawco.com slash cat and start filling out applications, right? You want to just call them and say, right. hey, I'm ready to go. I'm already in your system. Let's do this. Um, so applying for a bunch of companies, especially right now, like this time of year when nothing else is going on, this is when you should be going to the dentist. This is when you need to get your vaccines. This is when you need to take the dog to the vet and all that kind of stuff. Get the vehicle. Right totally worked over um, because you don't want to be doing it in storm season, right? You don't want to have like, all right, I'm ready to go. But wait a minute. No, I'm not. I got to 
I have to apply now and I got to go, you know, do a drug test yeah. and whatever. So, um, I don't know that it's, a, that it's that big of a deal. If they've never used you, you're probably going to be pretty far down the roster. Um, so you're probably not going to be like the companies that you work for normally, um, will call you right away. All right, the main company that you work mm -hmm. for. If you're on Ross, a bunch of other, this is probably the answer right here. Apply for all these companies because they're not going to put you like at the top of like the first call list if they've never worked for with you, right? Um, so you're not going to get a call from them until probably second or third or maybe fourth wave of the storm. And you'd be like, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm, ar I'm already, you know, thank you so much for calling, right? Ebril or whatever, whoever it is. Um, I, I I really appreciate it and, and I'm I'm, you know, I, I'm already deployed on this one, um, but don't forget about me. Um, I'll call you back and let you know when I get off, when I get you know off of this, and maybe we can work together in the future or whatever. You know, so, something like that. Right. The person who's calling me, or you know, it's, it may be text or whatever, but um, the dispatchers when they're trying to staff these storms, I mean, they're like it's volume, right? They're just trying to get warm bodies on it. So I, I wouldn't. Right. All this to say that I don't think I think it's a pretty small issue, like overall. Um, even if you have to say no to a company two or three times and they stop calling you, um, it just doesn't mean that you can't call them back later or the next year or whatever and be like, Hey, listen, I, you know, you guys called me a few times last over the last two or three years and I wasn't available for you, but, um, I am now. And if you, you know, um, whatever, right. So you can, yeah, I think yeah. you can, it's people run these companies, right? So it's not, it's not like you're, unless you like mess up and, you know, you, 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 you do something terrible. Oh, my my laptop's about ready to die. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your e &O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides e and and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.